I owe a debt of gratitude to the brass band movement for my musical training, without which I may never have become a musician. Over the past decade, whenever the opportunity has arisen, I have tried to bring my love of brass bands to a wider audience. When I was composer in residence for the Rombert Dance Company, I made a ballet about the mining industry and its connection to brass band music called Dark Arteries. It was the first time a brass band had been on stage with a ballet company, and it was toured the length and breadth of the country. Last year, I wrote my biggest piece to date, my concerto grosso for brass band and orchestra, which premiered at the BBC Proms at the Albert Hall. It was the first time in decades a brass band had appeared at the Proms, and the first time one had ever appeared on stage with an orchestra in this fashion. The piece went on to win a Royal Philharmonic Society Award and a Sky Art South Bank Award. So surely that's evidence that the wider cultural world do seem to be interested and engaged with what we are doing. Despite no longer playing in brass bands, I do feel extremely passionately about them. The music, the pedagogical role bands play in our communities, the culture. This is a music that gets in your blood and doesn't let go. There is something about the sound of a brass band that resonates quite literally in our bodies that can make even the most stoic of audience members sit up and lean forward. But there is also a shared cultural history which is inescapable. This is the music of protest, of the working class, of struggle. It's the music of coal, of industry. It's proud music, it's defiant music. You cannot begin to understand the wider world of British music without first understanding brass bands. Brass bands are still the biggest mass movement of working class people making music in history, and I believe Britain's most alluring form of folk music.